for the glory of Jesus Christ. dealing with the angels has to do with the angels of the sword. There's a number of angels related to swords. There's one angel has a power over fire. There's another angel with a sharp sickle, the angel of death. And now here we have the angel of the sharp sword. It says here in 2 Kings, we'll take us our text here in 2 Kings chapter 19 verse 35. And it came to pass that that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote the camp of the Assyrians a hundred fourscore and 5,000, that's 185,000 men died. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. They looked all around here, and here are all these dead soldiers laying all over the place. Who did that? An angel that had a sword. All right, let's pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, thank thee now for your goodness. We thank thee for this opportunity to learn some more about the angels and these angels who have the swords now. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I, I'll tell you what. Uh, I, I like this message here, dealing with these angels of the sword, because it covers right from the beginning of the Bible right to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us right in the beginning, in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 3, it tells us about this angel, uh, these cherubims that came down, and it talks about a sword that guarded, a flaming sword that guarded the garden of Eden. And it says that after Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden, here were two cherubims, and apparently floating in the midst of them was this flaming sword. Now we're going to see that the Bible talks about two flaming swords, one at the beginning and another one at the end of the Bible when Jesus comes at the second advent. And the Bible tells us there that they kept the way of the garden. Now why did God not want Adam and Eve to continue to live in the garden? after they had fallen into sin. Because after they had eaten that fruit, they had a fallen nature. Their body was in a process of literally dying because they ultimately would die. And it was actually an act of kindness. I saw a, uh, a kid uh, had a film, it was supposed to be a comedy, but it was, it was an amazing comedy about uh, these two women who drink this special Porsche potion and they become immortal, but their body continues to deteriorate. And, and they fall down the steps, and their arm fell off. And they, they got in a fight, and the head fell off of one of them. And then she had to put her head back on, and she had to get a, a plastic surgeon. So they hired this plastic surgeon to help them and continually to patch them up. And, and one thing that was interesting about that film is it shows why... God did not want Adam and Eve to eat of the tree of life and live forever in a fallen condition. You see, the Bible tells us that Jesus died on a cross. And when a person accepts Him as their personal Savior, when Jesus comes, the Bible says that we will be changed in the moment in a twinkle of an eye. And in order to prevent us from living forever in a fallen condition, the Bible says God put two angels down here at the Garden of Eden with a flaming sword. I started to look up in the encyclopedia to, to see some information about swords. And it was kind of amazing. They had all these different famous swords down through history. And yet they had two flaming swords. One was from the king of Spain, the other one was from another king, some other country. But they, they, were, they were swords that were made in a fashion so it looked like they were flaming. And they called them a flaming sword. Well, let me tell you something. There's two flaming swords in the Bible. There's the first one right here in Genesis chapter 3. Then the Bible tells us, The Lord came down to free the nation of Israel. And when he came down, he sent all these different plagues. And he said this. He said, listen. Uh, the death angel is going to come through the land of Egypt. And it said you're supposed to put blood on the top of the door and on each side of the doorpost. And so the Jewish people did. They put blood, a lamb's blood, slew a lamb and put the blood on the top and on each side of the doorpost. That, re that blood represents the Lord Jesus Christ. What he was going to do in the future. So all those people were looking toward the cross and by faith and what Christ was going to do in the future, they put this blood here on the doorpost. And the Bible says, when the angel came through, put this angel here with a sword, when this angel came through the land of Egypt, if there was no blood on the doorpost, 
He made blood. And the Bible says that he slew the firstborn in every house. And could you imagine that night? The guy said, the guy, he said, uh, uh, an Israeli looked out the window and he saw this angel and he walked up to a, uh, a, uh, an Egyptian. He said, and he had a sword and he said, who are you? He said, I am the angel of death. I'm looking for blood. If the blood is on the doorpost, I leave. If there's no blood on the doorpost, then I make blood in that house and slay the firstborn in every one of those houses. And the Bible said there was a great cry that went up. And people wept because the firstborn in every house, somebody had died. Then the Bible talks about a, <coughs> another angel. Mentioned here in Chronicles. Turn in your Bible to 1 Chronicles chapter 21. In 1 Chronicles chapter 21, it talks here in verse 16 about another angel with a sword. And the Bible says that David had done foolishly. The Bible told us, it's very interesting, the Bible says that the kings of Israel were not allowed to take a census. They were not allowed to go out and say, okay, how many soldiers do we have? How many uh, cavalrymen do we have on horses? How many foot soldiers do we have? How many guys do we have with bows and arrows and archery and that artillery, that sort of stuff? Said, uh, how many, you weren't allowed, the kings of Israel were not allowed to take a census. Because the Bible said God did not want them trusting in how many soldiers they had, but they wanted to trust in the Lord taking care of him in relation to international affairs. And so the Bible says that David decided to number Israel. And Joab said, oh, please don't do it. And he said, listen, I said go out there and count the soldiers, find out how many soldiers we got here. How can you fight a battle? You know how many soldiers you got. And the Bible says that that was so, that displeased God that he sent a plague and it said people started dying all over Israel. And it says an angel, 1 Chronicles chapter 21, stretched out his sword over Jerusalem. The Bible says that David repented for that sin and offered up a sacrifice and the plague was stopped and no more people died in Israel. Then the Bible tells us that in our text here in 2 Kings, that King Syria, and uh, Dory had a tremendous picture on that, said right over here, it said that uh, when the king uh, came, Assyria, it says an angel went out and smote him right here by night. And on this picture here, you can see all these dead bodies. And the king, the king of the, the captain over the host of Syria said, listen, we're not afraid of your God. We don't believe the Bible. And he woke up in the morning and 185,000 of his soldiers lay dead all around there. It says an angel went out in the midst of the night and smote the Syrians. One angel with a sword killed 185,000 soldiers. Then the Bible tells us another case there, an angel with a sword is found mentioned over here in, uh, in uh, the book of uh, Kings. And it talks about right here, this uh, talks about the prophet Balaam. And it says an angel, he was, he was backslidden and he was uh, going out trying to make money against the will of God and was going to curse the nation of Israel. And the Bible says an angel stood in the way with a sword. And the Bible says this, the donkey veered off the side and, and finally the Bible says his eyes were open and he saw that angel with a sword ready to take his head off. And he repented. And the Bible then tells us another angel with a sword that we looked at here earlier had to do with this angel on the red horse. Revelation chapter 6 verse 4, I saw him that sat upon a red horse and he had a sword. A sword was given to him to take peace from the earth. And this here refers to Russia. Uh, the Bible we looked at that in World War III. World War III will start right after the Russia and it says red horse. Russia, the Russian army, all over the world, the Russian army is called the Red Army. <laughs> now, isn't that a coincidence? Oh, we were in Russia preaching in, in Red Square, and they have St. Basil's Cathedral and the Kremlin right over here, and that square's called Red Square. And May the 1st, they have the Russian army march through there, and it's called the Red Army. Marches through Red Square. He said, I saw him set him on a red horse. And the hymn was given to take peace from the earth. Worldwide conflict. And then the Bible tells us something very unusual. It tells us a very, it makes a very unusual fact. I've heard a lot of sermons about the second coming of Christ. And here's one thing I've never heard. Turn your Bible to Isaiah chapter 27. 
It says that when Jesus comes again, he's going to destroy the Loch Ness Monster or any other dinosaurs that happen to be around in Africa or out in the ocean or any place else. Uh, the word dinosaur comes from Latin. The Greek word is dragon. Dragon is the Greek word for a large reptile. Dinosaur is the Latin word. So in Greek it's dragon, in Latin is dinosaur. The two words are synonyms. They mean exactly the same thing. Notice what it says here. Here's one of the most unusual verses dealing with a sword angel and dealing with the second coming. In Isaiah chapter 27, it tells us that there are some large reptiles out there. You can call them the Loch Ness Monster or whatever you want to call them. But let me tell you something. The Bible says there's something out there. And I got a book by Reader's Digest, and one guy had seen something out there in the ocean, one of those dinosaurs out there in the ocean, one of those dragons, and, and they said, Ah, oh, you're crazy, you're crazy, you didn't see anything. So this guy pitched the tent and slept on the beach for 12 years and took 15 photographs of these things out there in the ocean. They got a thing down there, I got a photograph, the Japanese trawler reached, and they picked up one of these things, looked like a the dinosaur carcass, about half the pose. They got a photograph of the thing in the net, in their fishing net. Notice what it says here in Isaiah chapter 27. Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1. In that day the Lord with a great and sword and, and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. Now watch this. And he will slay, with that sword, he's going to slay the dragon that is in the sea. And uh, you can go down to the Marine Museum in Miami. And the Marine Museum, this thing here about Leviathan, it says that you can't pierce his skin with a, with a sword. And down in the Marine Museum in Miami, they said that a, a piece of a carcass floated up and the skin was three inches thick and you could not pierce it with a sword. Just like he says over here in Job chapter 41. Turn over in your Bible to Job chapter 41. Over here in Job chapter 41, it talks about Leviathan, this giant reptile, this dinosaur. And over here in Job, he says this in Job 41. If I hear, there's some very interesting things here about Leviathan. He says here in verse 41, Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook, or his tongue with a cord, which thou lettest out? Can thou put a hook into his nose, or bore his jaw through? And then he goes down through here, he says, uh, makes some very unusual, he says, Canst thou fill his skin with uh, barbed iron or his head with fish spears? And then he goes on and he says this, None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is, now apparently he's, he's you know, um, like in hibernation or something down there. Who then is able to stand before him? And then he goes down through here and he says, uh, uh, Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride, shut up together as a closed seal. One is, the, one is so near the other that no air can come between them. And then it says this. It says, very interesting. It says, verse 18. By his nessings a light the shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Now it says when he goes through the ocean, it says it causes a light to shine behind him. A guy says, now, now you don't believe that. Oh yeah, yeah, I believe that. Because I live in Port I've lived in Puerto Rico for 10 years. And in Puerto Rico, they have the Phosphorus Bay on, down on the other side of Puerto Rico. There's only two in the world. One in Puerto Rico and one in Japan. And you know what happens? When a boat, you go over there and you take a boat through the Phosphorus Bay and it causes about 20 feet of light behind the boat causes the water to light up. And, and you, you drop a bucket down there and the bucket lights up. And then they pull up this water, has these microscopic like lightning bug, uh, microscopic little animals in the water, millions of them. I mean, just me, you can't even see them. And you, they, they dip a bucket over the side and you stick your hand in there and your hand lights up. And the guy said, man, that didn't nothing. He said, you got to go swimming. He said, you get out there swimming around, your hair lights up, your hand lights up. He said, it's just like that. He says it causes a path of light to shine after him. And the Bible says none can say him, but Jesus will eliminate all of those large reptiles in the ocean out there when he comes. Then last of all, the Bible tells us there's another flaming sword. Remember we noticed in the Bible back there in Genesis chapter 3, it says that God kicked Adam and Eve out of the garden. There was a flaming sword. Well, the Bible tells us here's another flaming sword. Revelation chapter 19. Turn there. Revelation chapter 19, verse 15. It tells us that when Jesus comes, it says a sword comes out of his mouth. 
Revelation chapter 19, turn over there very quickly in conclusion. Revelation chapter 19, verse 15. Revelation chapter 19, he says here in verse 15, when Jesus comes. Now, back there in Revelation chapter 6, it talked about the Antichrist coming on a white horse. Somebody would say, see there, that, that was Jesus. No, that wasn't Jesus, uh, because that guy didn't have a sword, he had a bow, because that's the sign of the Antichrist. Uh, but notice that when Jesus comes, he doesn't have a bow, he has a sword here. Revelation chapter 19, verse 15, a flaming sword. It says here, verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Now watch verse 15. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he shall tread the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of God. There it is. There's that winepress. World War Four. Jesus is coming back and a flaming sword, the Bible says, comes out of his mouth and will destroy the armies of the Antichrist. The Bible tells us there are angels with swords, there's cherubims with sword. Jesus is coming back with a flaming sword. And he that has the Son has life. And he that has not the God of, Son of God will not see life, but the wrath of God. The Bible tells us all those people who are destroyed by this flaming sword will go be cast into hell. And the Bible says the smoke of their torment will send up day and night forever and ever. Have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Let's have a word of prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank thee now for your goodness. With every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're not certain... Let me tell you something, the, this, the human race started off with a flaming sword back there in Genesis 3 and it's going to end up with a flaming sword with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. The best time to accept him as Lord is now. Accept him as Lord and Savior or there you accept him as Lord and Judge and it'll be too late. The Bible says now is the time. Today is the day. If you're not certain, right where you are, I want you to pray, Jesus, save me. I accept you as my personal Savior. The Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.